Hello once again, here you see my Epson Apex Plus Turbo XT system, which is currently identifying as a tower. Now when it comes to vintage computers, it's, you know, well accepted by the vintage computing community that you just can't do as many things with vintage computers as you can with modern computers. Um, there are some pretty cool games for vintage computers, um, there's nice office software. Um, that you can run even today. You can still do word processing on a computer like this. There's a lot of useful things you can do, but there's a lot of stuff you obviously can't do. Um, for example, you generally can't do email or access the internet, at least not without a great amount of effort and a great amount of compromise. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you an incredibly cool device that you can connect to not only your a uh, vintage IBM compatible PC, but almost any computer that has a standard RS-232 serial port, and you can use this device to access online services like forums, messaging services, information services, and you can do it all through Wi-Fi. Standard old Wi-Fi, just like any modern computer or other device connects to. And the best part is, it is a modern, affordable, currently available device that you can buy today and I'm really excited to show it to you. Here is the device in question. This is called a Wi-Fi 232 and it was the result of an open source effort by a vintage compu computer enthusiast by the name of Paul Rickards I think just over a year ago, a year and a few months ago um, is when he finished his um, device, which I do believe is the original, and uh, made it available for sale. But you can buy these from a few sources now, because um, everything's open source. That's one of the beautiful things about the project, is that Paul Rickards uh, developed the firmware, and he made it all open source. So anybody can build one of these. You can build one just from standard components and load the firmware onto it because it's open source and uh, you have your own Wi-Fi 232 device so a few people build these and sell them and um, if you're really keen you can make one yourself which is pretty sweet. This one however was not purchased from any of the uh, usual online places where you can buy these. This thing is really special to me because it was built by my boyfriend with his own two hands. He built this with his own two hands using parts he bought off eBay and he gave it to me. He's been entertaining the thought of building these and selling them um, and he wanted me to have the very first prototype which is what this is. This is the very first one that he built and it works perfectly. works great. And uh, yeah, so this is really special to me. You can see it was done on a perf board. He's uh, did all the wiring by hand, everything done by hand, soldered it by hand. And most of the parts are standard modules that you can buy on eBay. So yeah, it's uh, really, really special to me. So what is a Wi-Fi 232? What is this thing and what, you, what can you do with it? Well, it plugs into the serial port on your computer and it allows you to access, over the internet, over Wi-Fi, bulletin board systems. Now, some of my younger viewers might not know what a bulletin board system or BBS is, so I will give a quick um, high-level overview of them. Um, BBSs were basically what people used to get online on their computers before the World Wide Web. Uh, a BBS is basically an online service hosted by a computer. And unlike the internet, which is mostly made up of commercial entities, BBSs were usually hosted by hobbyists um, and, enth and computer enthusiasts. And basically, a BBS could be as simple as one person's own home computer hooked up to a telephone line, and with your computer, you would have a piece of software called a terminal emulator, and you would use your terminal emulator, and you'd have a dial-up modem. So this was the first thing dial-up modems were for. They were originally developed for BBSs before they became used uh, for the world for accessing the World Wide Web. You'd basically take your computer, and which you had your modem hooked up to and hooked up to your phone line, and you would dial a phone number that would dial this other person's phone line that their computer running BBS hosting software was connected to, 
and once the connection was made you could access this person's BBS and a BBS could be something like forums like we have internet forums today or things like Reddit um, a BBS could have a forum you could make an account with a username and a password and you could access these forums um, there could be files available for download. These could be as simple as text files, or they could even they could be images or even animated GIF in images. Um, sometimes BBSs would host freeware software, like free games and stuff that you could download. Um, some BBSs would host the news, like news headlines. You could log on to a BBS and read the news. All sorts of things. Um, BBSs were very much. Um, the World Wide Web before the World Wide Web. And there were other online services, commercial ones like America Online and Prodigy and CompuServe, um, but they were usually, they usually hosted a limited amount of things. Um, with BBSs, the, the sky was pretty much the limit because anybody could make a BBS and host whatever they wanted on it, make it for whatever purpose they wanted. And um, BBSs were everywhere. Um, the first BBSs went online in the 70s. And when the World Wide Web became, uh, started becoming common and affordable to the common man in the mid-90s, activity started to really slow down. A lot of BBSs shut down. And the very last of the old original BBSs shut down in the late 90s, early 2000s. With the rise of the vintage computing community in the past, you know, 10-15 years though, there has been another renaissance of bulletin board systems. People are starting to make their own bulletin board systems. All the old software that people used back in the 80s and 90s, that stuff's obviously all abandonware now. You can grab that for free and, and use it to make your own BBS. Um, but there are also modern BBS packages that people, that programmers have made now. Um, so you can, for example, you don't have to have a vintage computer to host your BBS on. You could use your modern computer. And the way it's done now is um, people don't usually host their BBSs as a dial-up service anymore. There are very few that still do, but what most of them do now is they host their BBSs on the internet over Telnet. So you actually enter basically a URL. Your computer can be connected to the internet somehow, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, whatever. You enter a URL and you access the bulletin board that way. That's how most of them work now. But the wonderful thing about BBS is, is where the World Wide Web has evolved over the years and you know it's, it's become more complex. You know the World Wide Web started as just simple text and images and now there's you know Java and, and videos and all, all manner of things that are simply impossible to access with a vintage computer. But unlike the World Wide Web, BBSs have never changed. They've never deviated from what they originally were because they, the standards have never changed to allow that. So the earliest BBSs were just straight text and eventually um, there, were, there were certain standards come about like the ANSI terminal standard that allowed for like special characters and colors and blinking and bold text and stuff like that. But that's really as far as it went. Um, BBS has never evolved uh, uh, past that. The methods for down uploading and downloading files, that never changed. And so um, you can use your vintage computer today, access any BBS that's online today, and it, it works just fine. There's no limitation there at all. So that's great. So this thing lets you access Telnet BBSs over the internet, over Wi-Fi, how does it actually work? How do you get a vintage computer to work with one of these? Well, it does some emulation. Um, this thing plugs into the serial port and it emulates a standard Hayes compatible modem to the computer. So all the computer sees this as is a Hayes compatible modem. Hayes was the uh, most prominent standard of computer modems for a long time. And this thing emulates a Hayes modem. When the computer communicates with it, this thing communicates back with standard Hayes modem signaling commands and everything. And that's what allows you to use basically any terminal emulator you want. It's just talking to a Hayes modem as far as the computer's concerned. So nothing really changes there. Standard baud rates, you know, um, there were various speeds of modems back in the day. You know, you started off with 300 baud, which is about the speed that uh, your average person can read. 
and that of course evolved to 600, 1200, 2400. Um, 9600 baud became a big standard, um, and it evolved past that, but um, I think as far as BBSs go back in the day, you really never saw anyone bother with anything faster than 9600 baud. Um, and then, of course, when dial-up internet came along and access to the World Wide Web, then obviously you needed stuff that was even faster. And then we had 14.4K, 28.8K, 56K modems. So what's kind of neat with this thing is you can actually set the speed that it communicates with the computer. Murray programmed this thing to start off at 9600 baud by default. That's what I usually keep it at. I find that's a good speed to go at because if you set this thing too fast and you're on a computer old enough like an XT system that doesn't have enough processing power to handle um, the faster speeds then you start getting errors and stuff so I find 9600 baud is a uh, good medium um, and it's pretty fast you, you don't wait too long waiting for BBS pages to load but yeah that's basically it um, it's just standard serial communication to the on the computer side and then on the device side it has a Wi-Fi radio you actually program the SSID and password of your router um, through the terminal emulation program so that's how you program the device itself to get it working and uh, after that you just do what you literally would have done for BBS back in the day the only difference is instead of typing in a phone number to connect to you type a URL. Not every terminal emulation programs uh, su actually support typing in a URL. Um, there are some of them that only accept a phone number, but for the terminal emulator that I'm gonna show you today, which is one that I highly recommend for IBM PC compatible computers, it handles URLs just fine. Um, it has a directory feature where you can, you know, set speed dial. Um, BBS is too, and even that will accept URLs instead of phone numbers just fine. So yeah, no big issue there. Before we go to the computer and demonstrate this, I'll just give you a quick overview of uh, what makes this thing up. So, um, Murray bought most of the parts uh, on eBay, I believe. So this thing with the barrel jack on it, this is a voltage regulator module. Murray gave me a cord with a barrel connector that plugs into it and he hacked on the other end a USB plug. So this thing's actually powered through USB. You plug this into the USB. I'm not sure how safe it would be to plug it into the USB of another computer. Um, but So I just use a USB power bank and it runs just fine. This thing draws very little power. So I have one of those cheap dollar store power banks and I've run this thing for hours um, from it. So it doesn't use a lot of power at all. Well, that plugs in there and that's how it gets its power. And there's a little power switch right there. And yeah, this is just a voltage regulator module. It takes in the 5 volts from the USB, outputs 3.3 volts for everything else. That was an eBay module, I believe. Um, this little black circuit board, this is the actual uh, uh, brain of the device. Um, this is an ESP, printing is so small. ESP8266 um, based Wi-Fi module. So this has the Wi-Fi radio on it. You can see the antenna printed on the circuit board there. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's got a little microcontroller on it. This is where the firmware stored the Wi-Fi 232 firmware. Um, so that's sort of the uh, the heart of the device. And then. This module right here is a level converter. It does the signal level conversion uh, from the serial port to allow the Wi-Fi module to communicate through the serial port. And that's based on a MAX3232 level converter. And I believe that was an eBay component. A couple of resistors, a capacitor. Uh, there's a jumper on here. I completely, I have no clue. I'm not sure Murray ever told me what it's for. My guess would be for programming the device. And yeah, it's all done on a perf board and uh, for a very first prototype and it works perfect. Uh, pretty darn great. Uh, good job to, to him. It's, it's pretty nice. All right, let's go to the computer and do some BBSing. All right, I've got the Wi Fi 232 device plugged into the back of the computer, so we'll turn on. Now, I have recently discovered one 
in my opinion, kind of major flaw with the Wi-Fi 232 device. Um, and that flaw is that it doesn't support WEP Wi-Fi encryption. It only supports WPA2. Um, and that's kind of a problem to me because uh, WEP is what we use here. Um, the wi our Wi-Fi network here has been we've we've had the router since 2008, I think. Um, it's a really old Siemens Speedstream uh, router, and it only supports WEP Wi-Fi encryption. And the Wi-Fi 232 device, at least with the firmware this one has loaded on it, which is someone else's firmware called uh, C64Net uh, Wi-Fi firmware, I believe it's called, it only seems to support WPA2 encryption. So what I've had to do here is uh, set up a mobile hotspot on my phone. So now, so I'm going to have to BBS on my phone's mobile data, but that shouldn't be too bad. BBSing obviously does not require a whole lot of data. The terminal emulator software that I'm going to be using is called Bananacom. It's a program with a very silly name, but it is by far the best terminal emulation program that I've used. It's a really excellent program, Bananacom 4.0. Um, if you want to find it to download it so you can use it on your own computer, um, it comes in a zip file. I can never find the website it's hosted on, but I know the actual file name. The zip file is called bcom40.zip. So if you Google bcom40.zip, you will find Bananacom 4.0. So I will start Bananacom by entering bcom. And yes, I am using a LCD monitor, unfortunately, because my CRT monitor is in storage. I used to be able to get away with this when uh, when I filmed my videos in 480i, but such isn't the case anymore, but hopefully things will look alright. Uh, so this is Bananacom up and running, simple terminal emulator. It's expecting the modem on COM1, the serial port COM1, and it's expecting 9600 baud. So that's what we have. So I will plug in the Wi-Fi 232 device into this power bank and what we'll see as it powers on you see it's threw some garbage on the screen but it's currently booting up and when it's done booting up um, it will print a message a welcome a little uh, welcome message on the screen all right so the device is done booting up it says C64 net Wi-Fi firmware 2.7 and then Murray, little smart butt, put his own uh, welcome message in here. Device designed and assembled by Murray Parkinson. And there's his YouTube channel which most of you probably know. It says error on Moto um, because it tried to connect to my phone but my phone has a different password now probably. I think the last time I tested this I didn't have a password on the mobile hotspot so I just gotta change the password here so um, Hayes compatible modems operate on what are called AT commands because each command begins with the letters AT um, so for this Wi-Fi 232 device one of the commands is ATW which lists all the Wi-Fi networks it can see so if I type ATW and hit enter So there sees my phone, and it sees Froggy, which is our home Wi-Fi network, which this thing won't connect to. So I want to connect to Moto, so hopefully I remember this right. So to connect, you go A-T-T, whoops, A-T-W, and then quotation marks, and then you type in the SSID, so Moto, and then a comma, and then the password, which in my case, T-E-S-T-I-C-L-E. Okay, and then end quotes, and that should be good for it to connect. Alright, so we're now connected to Wi-Fi, and we're ready to log on to a BBS. So, um, I do have a directory, which in Bananacom you bring up the directory with Alt-D. And there's my directory of uh, BBSs that I have here. Uh, to connect to a BBS manually, I believe it's ATD, and then quote, 
and probably one of the most popular BBS services um, that you can log on to today is Black Ice BBS and actually their URL has changed recently. That's not right anymore. The only thing it changed was it went from .com to .de because it's hosted in Germany. So blackice.bbsindex.de and I think that should work. Yep, we're connecting. Here we go, I think. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, there we go. Woohoo! And as you can see, Black Ice is full of pretty good uh, uh, graphics. Very nice uh, ASCII graphics. And I do have an account on here. The Maritime Girl. Feel free to send me a message on Black Ice if you want to. And password. Hit enter. So Black Ice has a lot of cool stuff. It has a forum, it has a private messaging service, and it does have news headlines. Um, it's got a bunch of other stuff too. Too many different things to count. Uh, this is my 56 call. Okay, hit enter. <laughs> There's all my private messages. You can probably guess who three of them are from. No new messages. Okay. Alright, so this is the home page of Black Ice BBS. Uh, gives you the news headlines right at the top. So uh, I can press N for news, news center. And again, we're doing this on an X, a Turbo XT system from 1988. We are wirelessly connected online to a BBS. How cool is that? And I'm now looking at headlines on my 30 year old uh, computer. That's pretty great. Press S for English. And I'm sorry for the shakiness. Uh, my phone turns the image stabilization off uh, when there's not enough light. So sorry about that. I guess we'll just go ABC News. And there's the news headlines. Not sure how up to date these are for quite a while. Um, the admin, yeah they are up to date, look at that, September 30th, sweet. For, for a while the, um, the sysop, the system operator of this BBS was sick I think. And the uh, news headlines did not get updated for quite a long time. Uh, so we can press escape to go back. Uh, we'll get out of the new center. Let's go to the message menu. There's a bunch of stuff here. Uh, well, you get the idea anyhow. Um, I will get out of here. We'll log on to another BBS. So I will press G to log out. And, uh... There's a, when you log out, you can add what's called a one-liner. It's basically a line of text where you can say whatever you want within reason. So people just say hi. I like to add, I like to uh, put one once in a while, say, hey, I'm logging on from a, from a Turbo XT computer. There it gives uh, recommendations for other BBSs you can log to, log on to. Do you want to leave? Yes loads one final graphic image and then the Wi-Fi 232 device reports no carrier which means it's not hearing anything anymore it has disconnected from the from the uh, BBS um, so I'll go into my directory here we will log on to first we'll log on to a 90's Manila BBS this is a BBS hosted in the Philippines really nice it looks really nice and it's got a lot of graphics uh, a lot of ASCII graphics on it which I quite like so it's definitely got a lot of style points. So there you go, a 90's Manila BBS. There's the Telnet address, the HTTP, Sysops email.
powered by GNU Linux. And there's hosts for Linux, there's hosts for in for uh, Windows, there's BBS host software for DOS, and there's the specs, Debian 8.0, Intel Xeon, 2 gigahertz, 1 gig of RAM, so this guy's using an older computer, and a 50 gig SSD. Another nice graphic. Another nice graphic. And we're at the home page. And uh, posting from my Power Mac G4 450 running OpenBSD. Okay, so these are a list of bulletins by the uh, SysOp. Just updates on what's happening with the BBS. Alright, now we're at the main menu. Um, if we press F for file areas, this is where we can download files. And Bananacom is actually kind of interesting. It has a built-in file viewer for text files and for some formats of images, um, which I find quite impressive. I find that the image viewer does not work very well, but it's there. <laughs> Usage graph. Let's see how much the uh, system's been used. Okay, that doesn't say a whole heck of a lot except that one person, <laughs> probably one person logged on here, which m might be me for all we know. Press tab for more. What more is there to see? Oh, days of the week. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, in the months of the year. And I think that we're back at the beginning here. So sort of the cool thing you might notice about the the later um, terminal protocols that BBSs use. I'm, I'm connecting through these BBSs using the ANSI protocol. That's the standard now. And what's kind of neat about ANSI is, unlike older standards where everything has to be drawn from left to right and top to bottom, ANSI lets things be drawn basically whenever's convenient. So you just saw these bars being drawn upwards, which is kind of interesting. And of course it drew everything else before it drew the bars. Alright, I'm going to get out of here. Press G for goodbye. Yes, disconnect me. And there we have another nice graphic. And we're done. So, the next BBS I'm going to show you is it's this one called i80's Apple II BBS, and yes, that's literally what it's called. Um, everybody hates that it's grammatically incorrect. Um, the sysop hasn't really given a reason as to why they called it i80's Apple II BBS instead of n80's Apple II BBS. Um, it's a mystery to me as much as you, but it's a cool BBS. Um, it's based on a really early BBS hosting package, so it's super basic, it's all text, and, oh, it looks like we can't log on. Cool! Maybe it's, uh, down right now. It's too bad, because what's really cool about it is, um, it's hosted on a real Apple II from floppy disks. Everything is stored on floppy disks, there's no hard drive. Um, the whole BBS runs from, I think, two. Apple uh, Duo Disk drives. Well, if you want to see it, you can um, you can find out yourself. Um, there are terminal emulator programs for uh, Windows. You know, modern versions of Windows. There's Sync Term, Putty, and those will let you connect to a Telnet BBS. You don't need any extra hardware. It just does it over the internet connection. The last BBS I'm going to show is one that's pretty cool because it's actually hosted by my boyfriend. Um, it's this one right here, the Great Great Wall BBS. Um, the name is an inside joke between Murray and I. Um, we are definitely not affiliated with any uh, political ideology that may be gathered from the name of the BBS. It's purely an inside joke. 
I hope this is online. Murray's been keeping it online 24-7 as far as I know, so hopefully we'll get on here. Oh, it looks good. All right. <laughs> and he made this graphic himself of this this wall. The Great Great Wall BBS. Running World Group, that's the name of the uh, of the software. Murray's hosting this BBS on uh, a 486 system running MS-DOS. And he has it turned on 24-7, connected over Ethernet. Um, and you can log on to this. Um, I'll give you the, uh, the URL here. It's uh, greatgreatwall.ddns.net. And that's port 23, as uh, most BBSs are. So... And I'm actually COSIS up, technically. I don't do anything because Murray hasn't figured out how to give me privileges, but he does officially name me as COSIS up, which is very sweet. Uh, BBSs can also signal the computer to beep. That's what you just heard there. And it says there's mail in my mailbox. Uh, continue. World Group's kind of an aggravating BBS system to use, in my opinion, because, for example, when it prompts you to press a letter to do something, you have to press the letter and then press enter, which is kind of annoying. Uh, Murray's also having a problem with this BBS. If you connect via a modern computer on a modern uh, uh, terminal emulator program, um, everything loads super slow. It runs at the equivalent of like 150 baud. But for some reason, using it on a vintage computer with a Wi-Fi 232 device, it works just fine. We have no clue what's going on. Uh, I don't suppose he's put anything in the information center. He very much made this thing just for fun. Um, it's certainly uh, still uh, very cool to use. Uh, he has more patience than I would have setting something like this up. Um, I don't suppose... Oh, he filled this out. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, right. Welcome to the Great Great Wall BBS, a system that was created for fun and experimentation. This is also, to my knowledge, the only BBS currently running in South Africa. It is located in Pinetown, KwaZulu-Natal, and runs on a 66, 66 MHz 486 DX with 8 megs of RAM and a 20 GB hard drive configured using Western Digital's Easy Drive. System runs the World Group BBS software and is connected directly to the internet through an Ethernet card via a packet driver. A packet driver is what allows a, a piece of software that looks for a modem to instead be redirected to an Ethernet card. So World Group uh, expects to for connections to come in over the phone line, but Murray's of course has the computer connected to Ethernet, so a packet driver is used to redirect. Um, data that would normally go to the serial port through the Ethernet card inside the computer instead. Uh, a picture of the BBS's server taken with a Sony floppy disk camera can be found in the file library. Oh, I don't think he told me he's done this stuff. He's done some work to this thing since I last logged on. BBS is still under construction, so things are going to feel somewhat incomplete compared to other boards, but more content should be coming soon. One of my plans is for this board to have a large amount of vintage software available for download in the file section. That's right, and that would be very cool if he manages to do that. So that people with serial Wi-Fi modem devices can easily download software directly onto their systems. I may also include other files of historical value and interest, such as a mirror of textfiles.com's library or something similar. For the record, this system's name is an inside joke and not in any way affiliated with any political views whatsoever. The top of this system is RetroM, that's the name of his uh, account on this BBS, aka 44CT232 on YouTube. And Kosisop is the Maritime Girl, also on YouTube. We hope you have fun and enjoy your stay. Indeed. Anything after that? Nope. Alright. Well, let's go to the file repository then and get that Sony Mavica picture that he claims to have. Uh, exit. Ooh, things are sluggish over this cellular connection. Uh, 
file libraries, L. Uh, find files. List files by name, alphabetically. Uh, start at the letter A, I guess. Uh, all libraries. Okay, server.jpg, 50 kilobytes. He, uh, he uploaded it on June 26, oh, a long time ago. Maybe he told me about this and I forgot. Uh, if I press enter, okay. It's been downloaded six times. There are several accounts on this thing. Um, people have made accounts. Uh, they don't do anything afterwards, but they have made accounts, which is pretty cool. Um, you can find information about this BBS and pretty much all BBS is on a very good website, telnetbbsguide.com. Uh, control D to download. So it has automatically prompted Bananacom to open its uh, uh, file transfer unit here. And we are downloading at a blistering 127 bytes per second with a lot of errors. Oh no. Oh jeez. Uh, <laughs> this is not working well. I'm going to abort. Oh. Oh, I didn't like that. Yeah, this happens once in a while. Oh, there we go. Usually I have to restart the computer. Uh, try again? Sure. So, we want to download with Z modem. Z. Okay. So there's different file transfer protocols. It started with X modem and then Y modem and Z modem's the uh, standard now. And there's also Kermit. This isn't working very well. I'm going to see if I can get this downloaded and then we'll come back. Alright, we're downloading now. I chose Kermit instead of Z modem. Those are the only two protocols that Bananacom supports. We're downloading now at a blistering 235 bytes a second. It's a 50 kilobyte file. We've got 6 kilobytes downloaded. And we're done. Sweet. Now the question is, can Bananacom view a JPEG file? I'm not confident. Oops. Alt M. I'm not confident it'll work, but we'll find out. Is it gonna work? I suppose asking an XT to render a JPEG file is probably a tall order. Okay, so it actually turns out that my monitor was frozen, which this monitor does once in a while. It'll literally crash, and yeah, I have to turn the monitor off and back on. But um, as you can see, it's very slowly rendering it. I assume the computer somewhere over here though, so it looks like it hasn't zoomed out the picture. It's just loading it off screen. But as you can see, uh, friggin' 10 megahertz NEC V20 does have an 8087 math coprocessor uh, rendering a JPEG file. But it appears that it's, we're only going to be able to see the very top left corner of it. Alright, so clearly this isn't going to work out, but uh, let me see. I might not be able to exit, because I think Bananacom might still be rendering the rest of the image that we can't see. Well, I'll just hit Control alt delete I went online and I found uh, another... Um, JPEG image viewer for DOS that claims to work on an XT system. So I have it on this floppy disk here. And we'll see if that'll load the file. Okay. It's called LXPIC. Okay, let's see if that works. Oh, we're getting something. And it looks different from last time. Hopefully this is a zoomed out view. Oh, I think it is. This probably looks way better on video than it does in real life. <laughs>
It's doing what it can with the color dithering. Claims to support Visa video standards, which I know the Sang ET4000 does. But it doesn't appear to be using any of those standards. Here it comes anyhow. And that's the World Group BBS software on the uh, on Murray's display there. Man, I'm sure this brings back nostalgia for the old days of the internet waiting for websites to load like this. And by nostalgia, I mean PTSD. And there it is. And that's the computer that the Great Great Wall BBS runs on. So, I've just logged off the Great Great Wall BBS there. Um, BBS hosted by my boyfriend. Um, and there's the, the URL, the Telnet URL. Once again, uh, I'm sure Murray would, would love it to uh, have some more action going on here. But, I think that's all there is to show of the Wi-Fi 232 um, Wi-Fi modem device that lets your vintage computer connect to a BBS over Wi-Fi. Um, it is definitely a very cool device um, that opens up a wide range of possibilities for your vintage computer. Um, you're no longer limited to just, you know, local programs, games, and and stuff like that. Now you have a way to sort of explore on sort of a subset of the online world on your vintage computer, and that's pretty darn sweet. And um, I can't give you any prices of what it costs to, uh, to buy them or whatever, because I don't actually know. Like I said, this one uh, that I have was one Murray built and sent to me, um, which I really love. Um, but if you just Google Wi-Fi 232, you'll be able to find some websites, and you can probably buy them in kits as well as uh, pre-built. But that's it. We'll uh, shut the computer down here. And there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.